If that final scene felt familiar, it's a far less powerful replica of the last scene in Gun Crazy, which Joseph Lewis had made right before this film. Lewis was a self-taught filmmaker who described himself as an artist without portfolio, and his direction of a lady without passport is absolutely first rate. Lewis always knows precisely where to put the camera for maximum effect, and the dynamic way he cuts between shots is perfection. As a bonus, he benefited from the most entertaining performance of John Hodiak's career. Yet all this good stuff, including a patented dose of George McCready menace, doesn't really add up to much. The dramatic stakes are low, the script is derivative, and the studio's insistence on showing off all the Cuban window dressing saps the story of momentum. Of course, after Gun Crazy, anything Joe Lewis made would suffer by comparison. A Lady Without Passport was not a box office success. In fact, it began Hedy Lamarr's slide into career purgatory. She'd only make another half dozen or so pictures, none very good, before retiring from show business in 1958. Despite never making a truly memorable movie, Lamar had one of the most intriguing lives of anyone in the picture business. She was born Hedwig Eva Maria Kiesler in Vienna in 1914. And while still a teenager, she became a protege of legendary theater director, Max Reinhardt. Now, before she was 20, Hedwig had made a name for herself in a few German films, but it was her fifth picture for Czech avant-garde filmmaker Gustav Machery, that made her an international sensation. Ecstasy, produced in 1933, featured several scenes of Miss Kiesler in the nude, as well as a prolonged close-up of her luminous face in the throes of ecstasy. In Europe, it was heralded as an art film, but in America, it was branded scandalous smut, which didn't stop that notorious prude, Louis B. Mayer, from signing Hetty Kiesler to a long-term contract, changing her name, and putting her in wholesome MGM fare. Well, before any of that happened, however, Kiesler had married millionaire Friedrich Mandel, who made his fortune selling munitions to Germany's Third Reich, as well as the fascists in Italy. Mandel would show off his trophy wife at meetings with arms dealers, and although she was rarely invited to speak, her eyes and ears were wide open. What few men realized was that in addition to her exceptional beauty, Hedvig Kiesler had an extraordinary aptitude for science. Sick of being Mandel's eye candy, she dumped her husband and moved to Paris, then London, where she accepted Mayer's offer to make films in Hollywood. But her real passion was designing a frequency hopping guidance system for torpedoes. She developed it with composer George Antheil, and in 1942, these two artists and self-taught scientists were granted a patent on their new technology. They pitched it to the U.S. Navy, which found it unworkable with its existing munitions. After the war, however, the military adopted the radio frequency guidance system with just enough tweaks to avoid patent infringement on Lamar and Antheil's creation which essentially is the basis for the cellular technology that would eventually revolutionize telecommunications worldwide. But it would be decades before groups like the Electronic Frontier Foundation and the National Inventors Hall of Fame acknowledged Hedy Lamarr's pioneering work. By that time, she was living in seclusion, only making news when she was twice arrested for shoplifting. Lamar lived out the final years of her life as a recluse, communicating with the outside world solely through the telephone. Now, viewers just learning this story probably think I'm making it all up, but it's absolutely true. Books and plays have been written about it, as well as the 2017 documentary, Bombshell, the Hedy Lamar story. But amazingly, no feature film has yet been made about the world's most beautiful woman creating the basics of cell phone technology. Come on, Paul Thomas Anderson or Todd Haynes, what are you guys waiting for? This could be another Oppenheimer with sex appeal. Okay, speaking of atomic bombs, next week on Noir Alley, I'll be showing the 1953 thriller Split Second, which is basically the petrified forest on an atomic testing site. 
But if you want to watch classic noir on a big screen, join me September 20th through the 22nd at the Redford Theater in Detroit, where I'll be hosting the latest edition of my Noir City Film Festival. Check out this website for more information. Either way, I'll see you in the shadows. <laughs>